you. Yeah, so hi everyone. Um, so I'm Katie and I'm based at City College Plymouth. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about our action research on alternative learning environments. So we've really been exploring maths outside the traditional classroom environment. Um, and this is our third year of research. So today I'm just going to run through why we've decided to continue researching alternative learning environments, why they're important, um, how we've developed it in year three, what we've discovered so far, and, and our plans for keeping the momentum going um, in 22, 23 and beyond. Uh, so this is our action research question. So it's quite a wordy one. I won't read it all to you, but just to summarise. Um, so we're focusing in on motivation and engagement um, with Master GCSE research and Level 2 Functional Skills Learners. It's about looking at practical um, outside the classroom maths activities, um, but also looking in on how we can be sympathetic to um, learners' usual ways of working. So vocational specific, um, some core lesson support. We've looked at some team teaching um, and a really holistic method of trying to support students to get the best out of their um, experience at college and to achieve. So why are we continuing alternative learning environments? So we've got a really great um, action research group um, and everyone decided to continue into the third year. Um, at City College Plymouth, we've got three main teacher lecturers that are involved on that. Um, and that's myself, Dawn and Darren. We've got a range of experience between us and we've sort of all come from different backgrounds. So um, Dawn is from a military background. Uh, Darren's come from more of a geography background um, and then come into maths teaching and mine is more student engagement. So I think we bring lots of qualities um, to, the, to the research project. Um, we've also been looking at um, working outdoors. We're all passionate about the outdoors. We're all training to be forest school leaders at the moment. Um, and it's something that we feel really supports students. The research has been carried out on three sites. So here at City College Plymouth, also with our satellite unit, um, PK Barracks, and our specialist autism unit on site, which is Monterey House. Um, there's been a few changes this year. So we did have Exeter College taking part at the beginning, um, but unfortunately due to COVID and some staffing changes for them, they've had to um, stop the research this year, but we we'll hope that they'll join again from September for the last part of the project. Um, and we've added in Compete With Me and the element of comedy, which I'll go into a little bit more further in the, in the presentation. So a little bit about Plymouth. Um, so if any of you saw Ash's presentation earlier, you might already have seen some of these um, figures, but we're an inner city college um, and that our student demographic definitely reflects that. Um, we're based in Devonport, um, which is actually in the top 1% of deprivation in the country. Um, so some of the barriers that we see um, that learners have um, are, are reflective of that. Um, We've worked a lot around mass anxiety for the whole of the CFM project, and we are seeing that a huge amount of our learners, it's increased again this year, come to us with quite high levels of mass anxiety and, and generally social anxiety following COVID as well. Um, we've got the Plymouth Challenge. Um, so at all key stage levels throughout Plymouth, um, we are below the national average, average in numeracy skills. So that's something that we've been working closely with our network partners and also um, Plymouth City Council and STEM Plymouth to really build that and see how we can support that transition from secondary to FE and um, what sort of things all practitioners in the region can be working on. Um, and something that we've added in again this year to look at is nature deficit disorder. So although we're fortunate to be based in the southwest, we've got the sea right next to us, we've got the moors. Um, so many of our students don't experience it outside. Um, they don't spend any time outdoors. Um, and it, actually, it's really great to be able to show them what benefits that can bring them. So introduction and background. So what did we find last year? So we focused in on motivation engagement. We found there was behavioural improvement, particularly for more extreme behaviours. Um, students were more focused, they took more ownership, they were more resilient. Um, and it really renewed and ignited that passion for staff to be able to think outside the box when creating lessons. Um, so because we've seen these positive suggestions, we've decided to carry on into year three. Um, so for this year, we've worked with a wider range of students. So we've um, 300 students have been involved in our research this year. Um, we looked at the structure of the sessions, how could we make it more adaptable and flexible so that more lecturers can access it with their students. Um, we've got a mass mastery base to the sessions that we've created. Um, and we've also looked at the effect of comedy and humour on student, um, students' ability to, to learn and to relax in the environment and their retention of information. So we've got a, um, an amazing mentor this year uh, called Moj. So it's just a little video from Moj to introduce him. So hopefully you can all hear it. Hi everyone, my name is Moj and I am a public speaker, comedian, actor, I'm a storyteller and I love spending time outside. I'm also a paddy dive master, so I've helped on conservation projects and trying to bring those two things together. Teaching has only really been the last few centuries that it's been wedged into a classroom. So with storytelling and being outdoors, I love alternative learning environments. 
and <clears throat> trying to help students to be outdoors, to be back in their natural frequency where their focus is elevated and to prove to them that they can absorb so much information and make learning more practical by being outdoors and throwing in a bit of comedy too. Hi everyone, my name is Moj. <laughs> Sorry, I need to see that one again. There we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, with the addition of Moj, that's where we've um, explored humour and comedy within the sessions. Um, so I'd worked with Moj before um, when I worked in student engagement with HE students, um, and he's really a fantastic um, mentor and, and able to get students really engaged with sessions. He's got so much experience, but through that, he's also a comedian as well. So some of you might recognise him from different events in your colleges. Um, but he's been a great addition to the project. Um, our ongoing object objectives are the same from um, the last two years. Um, so really it's to understand current mathematics practice, to look at practical activities based outside the traditional classroom. And we're trying to make those as flexible as possible. So it's looking at what facilities do you have available on a college site? So outside the classroom doesn't necessarily mean outdoors. It could be that you're using the hospitality space, you're doing it in a workshop for vocational areas, could be using the canteen, the sports hall, but just exploring what spaces you have available so you can make it very different from the classroom environment. Um, we want to look at the effectiveness of this. Um, we also wanted to look more at learner characteristics this year and how that affects their engagement with the sessions. Um, and we want to share those results as far and wide as possible. So the developments from 2021, so as I said, we've got these three sites involved. Um, we've also looked at the structure and variety of sessions. So this year we added in Compete With Me, which is in the scheme of work. Um, it's every, every term, it's a week of activities so that every maths learner can experience it. Um, so we cut it down to a half an hour session um, and they come in and with their lecturer and with the maths centre team um, and, and experience the session. We've used previously the Focus 15 to um, create mastery principles within our sessions um, and we've developed the sessions so that each session recaps some really key um, building blocks for the for mass learning. And as I said, with the exploration of humour, um, it's all about looking at how that can affect students' long term memory um, and how it improves their retention of information. And when we say humour, it's not about adding in jokes to the session. Um, it can be through lots of little things that just make that environment more comfortable. So um, I'll go into that a little bit more as we carry on. Um, but some of the key benefits of laughter, as we, you know, laughter is great for all of us, but for our students, especially this year, it lowers stress levels, it improves memory and also it enhances social connections. So a lot of presentations today have touched on how um, behaviour has been quite different in students this year as they've been, you know, out of the school setting and we've all experienced COVID. So actually about creating those social connections and more of a community in the classroom has been really beneficial as well. So just to run through some of the alternative sessions that we've done. So um, one of our favourites from last year was the murder and mystery session. So if anyone saw CFM Live last year, you might have heard us talk about that one. Um, it was really effective with students. It, we use it with policing students and our public services students because it might be one of some of the careers that they want to go into. But also just in general for students, a lot of people are interested in true crime and those sorts of documentaries. And so um, we've created a session. It covers lots of things in the murder mystery session. So things like um, calculating area, radius, diameter of the circle, we've got interpreting data, charts and graphs, probability, scale conversion, um, distance speed time. So it's a really good recap session um, on lots of key areas. But Compete With Me, um, this is what we've added internally. So we've done two sessions of Compete With Me this year so far. Um, so we did a game show to begin with. So adding in the element of comedy, we had some game show host outfits, which students could step up and be the host or we were the host. Their lecturers were involved, everybody got involved. Um, and our first session for the game show was looking at ca catchphrase, countdown and symmetry invaders. So it's about mathematical language, um, basic number, and also looking at shapes, transformation, symmetry. Um, so lots of areas covered within that one as well. For the STEM sessions, we did a week of, um, it was balloon car racing. Um, which that was the element of comedy that added in. We got everyone into teams. They had to build their balloon car. Then we looked at speed distance time afterwards. Um, and we also did a quiz in there. So we just added that, that element of competition, which often you get, get students um, providing more peer-to-peer -peer support um, and, and really that community environment. And one of the other sessions that we did with Moj, who's our mentor, is um, a session outdoors in our college woodlands. So we're very fortunate to have a college woodlands, um, which is a great space for students. Um, but we did, you can't learn when you're stressed and you can't learn when you're distracted. So it was all about memory techniques. We also, um, there was a little bit of environmental studies in there and looking at statistics 
on, on different things. But also we used activities like copycat activities and mirroring. So that was the comedy element. So at the beginning, we were all clapping ribbons together. We were uh, mimicking faces that Mode was pulling. And it's just about that, getting those students really engaged at the beginning of the session. So the structure of the sessions, what we do is we have um, a start, everybody comes in, we talk about getting them into groups, what we're going to do today, um, then that's all set up. We do the practical maths activity um, and then at the end we recap what they've actually, you know, what they've achieved, what they've covered in the session. Quite often they don't realise that they, you know, how, how well they've done in different aspects and it's really good just to celebrate that. And then we get learner feedback and lecturer feedback as well. So it's about everybody observing each other in the classroom as well. We try and create really horizontal relationships for the alternative sessions. So um, in the student survey, we'll ask them what, whether they thought their um, peers engaged more as well. Um, and then obviously the lecturers are seeing whether students have engaged more than they usually do in the session. So these are some examples of one of the sessions and just the sort of questions that we ask students. So I was happy when my teacher said we would do this maths activity. Um, did you laugh during the session, which is something we've added into the feedback this year, just to look at that comedy humour element. Um, I think this lesson helped me with my maths. Um, and then on the staff survey, it will also ask them, how do they feel students interacted with them? Were they, were they more engaged? Did they talk more? Were they engaging more with, um, their colleague, with, with other students in the class? Um, so it's about that observation of everyone involved. And what we discovered, um, so initially we looked back at our, what we wanted to do in our literature review and which areas we thought we needed to focus in on. So mass anxiety, again, was a huge aspect. Um, skills gaps, which I know have been highlighted in lots of um, sessions today. The effect of domain, learner motivation, um, the effect of the great outdoors on students, experiential learning. So these are sort of areas that we wanted to really focus in on. Um, and we looked at behavioural, cognitive and relational um, engagement of students um, which includes the effective domain. So we really wanted to look at that relationship between lecturer and student um, and how by having sessions where everybody's involved, everybody's part of it, um, can really build that, that relationship. So our overall findings, so for our alternative sessions, we found that on average 92% of students enjoyed the activity. 70% of students think that the activity helped them with their math skills. 84% um, of students joined in more than usual. Uh, in a math lesson, um, what we want to see and what we're aiming for is that after having these termly um, alternative sessions, or more regularly, hopefully, um, it's then that engagement with lessons after that, you know, engaging with their maths qualifications, the knock on effect of these sessions. And did you laugh during this session? 86% um, of students did, so that was good. <laughs> Um, we asked them what one word would they use to describe the session. Um, so the, I've put a selection here, but I just think it was really good to highlight that there's some great ones here, you know, guiding, inspiring, enjoyable, relaxing, all of those aspects. But also there's still some words in there that, you know, that we want to encourage some feelings from students like, you know, frustrating, scary. They, those sorts of feelings we want to encourage in the alternative sessions as well, because it's helping those students to overcome that um, and build resilience. Um, and hopefully as they experience more sessions, you know, that those feelings will develop for them. So what we found, two seconds, that's a note. <laughs> um, so the ongoing effect of COVID. So I know we don't like talking about it anymore and obviously we've been back to a normal year, um, but it has really had an effect still on students and staff. And I think that's on behaviours, on how confident people feel um, and lots of different aspects. It's been something to consider. And, and obviously with our network partners taking part in the research, it was something that affected it really early on. Um, the face-to-face -face impact and visibility throughout campus, it's been great to be back on site for a full year. And that has really supported us to engage with students. We've been able to reach more students in the research um, and we're really pleased to have 300 students take part. Flexible and adaptable sessions kind of ties in with this as well. So um, we found that lecturers were more likely to access these alternative sessions and be part of it um, if we can make it as flexible as possible. So looking at the alternative environment that you can use, um, can they, could it be translatable to a classroom if that is the only option for them? But actually, let's look at what spaces we have around the college um, and being adaptable as well. So they could do aspects of a session. So with Compete With Me, they could choose two aspects out of three to do. They don't have to complete the full session, but actually their students then get the opportunity to be involved. Um, it's all about creating that level playing field. Um, we, we find that when we um, have the sessions, students get into teams, we make sure that, you know, that the activities are accessible for everyone. Um, and then, then that in, you know, increases that autonomy and resilience for students. 
We've seen positive effects on behaviour again um, and on mass anxiety, particularly with adding in an element of humour or comedy. Um, it can really make that space feel more comfortable um, and safe for them. So that's something that we want to continue moving forward. Open environments. We found that the more open the environment, the more open the student in, in our experience so far. Um, so particularly for any sessions that we do outdoors, um, the effect seems to be um, stronger on the student. And, and when we look at the qualitative feedback afterwards, um, they've really taken a lot from it. And we hope that that would stay, you know, those memories of those sessions then supports them to engage more with learning maths as a whole. Um, increased focus and engagement. Again, we saw that across the board. Um, and continued improvement across college maths culture. So we always get lecturers involved in the sessions as well. Um, so it's increased that collaboration. And if you're looking at alternative learning environments, so if you want to use do a murder mystery and use the science labs, or if you're doing a hospitality based session and you want to go, you know, it's speaking to those teams, it's getting everybody involved. We do a lot of stuff around college to encourage that anyway. So we do things like Maths Corner, we're in main reception, um, and we'll get other teams involved and we'll just do a short vocational maths based activity um, that stu any students can take part in. So it's just about increasing that visibility um, and that's really supported us with the alternative learning environments. So our key takeaways are, <laughs> um, so it's the effect on learner engagement, focus, um, their behaviour and also resilience. We've still seen really strong indications that these sessions support that and they also support them to engage more with learning maths as a whole. Um, and variety is the spice of life. So I think for staff and for students, being able to be inventive, um, innovative, creative has really benefited our staff. So thinking about different ways to deliver a topic, thinking about, you know, more exciting, thinking about the element of comedy has also been really fun to design these sessions. Um, so that's something for staff, I think, has really supported them and we want to continue that. But also for learners, um, so it can really kickstart their enjoyment of the subject again, if they do something really different and practical. Um, it's about getting them thinking that they can do it, you know, supporting that growth mindset um, and actually showing that maths can be quite fun and exciting and it can be funny. Um, so that's definitely a key takeaway for us. And um, so keeping up the momentum for 2022, no, 2022, yeah, 23, yeah. <laughs> 22, 23 um, and beyond. Um, so continued high quality CPD. So we've got um, a little bit longer of the CFM project. Um, so we're running until March 23. So we want to make sure that there's a lot of CPD for the, for the staff before then and also upskilling from the members that have already been involved in the action research group. So peer to peer support. Um, continuing to embed in alternative sessions in the scheme of work timely. So complete with these continuing um, and that will continue past the project. Um, and it'll be about students having that opportunity to have alternative math sessions every term. Um, increasing the avenues for student feedback. So again, on the visibility side of it, it's just making sure that we're able to get that fe the feedback from students and develop those sessions. So if they come to us with an idea, I think it's really important that we act on that. Um, we currently do surveys after the sessions with them, but we're going to develop some forums moving forward with students. Um, and yeah, collaboration. I think it's just about encouraging creativity and innovation of practice. We all want to be doing something new at work. We want to try new things. Um, and it's really good to change how you deliver a session every so often and everyone have a chance to have an input into that um, to make it you know, more exciting for staff and students. Um, so just continuing that collaboration with teams throughout the college. Um, and yeah, and a nice quote to finish on. So the best classroom and richest, co richest cupboard is roof only by the sky. Um, we're particularly interested in maths outdoors here and lessons outdoors. Um, and it's been something that's just been so effective with our students. Thank you. <laughs> uh, any questions?